There's a lot of cool reptiles out there, but some of them you can't have. So today, let's go over the top five most illegal reptiles in the entire world. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. For this video, we'll break down illegal reptiles. Some are illegal in pockets of certain countries and some are illegal basically everywhere in the world besides for zoos or things like that. So with that in mind, if I talk about an illegal reptile, it's not cool if you go get it and it's illegal in your area. It's not cool, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is, did you know these things were freaking illegal? It's kinda cool. And at the end, we'll get to a contest, so if you wanna win some free stuff from us, just stick around to the end. But let's just start off with number five, tegus. Now this is one that fits into the illegal in some pockets of some countries. This goes especially for black and white tegus, but not necessarily, some places all tegus are banned. You just cannot have them. This could be places like Florida. They're trying to do it in South Carolina. There's a bunch of places in the US where it's gonna be a statewide ban or they're trying to make it a statewide ban. And there's some places where it just might be illegal in your county or your city. There's a bunch of silly city laws where certain things are illegal or provincial laws like Saskatchewan where ball pythons are illegal, but it doesn't make sense because a tegu, like a ball python, isn't dangerous to humans, and in certain places like South Carolina, tegus are not gonna thrive to the point where they're gonna become an invasive species. And to a certain extent, I actually kinda get it because it is terrible when an invasive species, and that's the idea, right? That's why they're illegal in a lot of these places. If an invasive species starts to decimate a population, that isn't cool. And people are trying to say this is the main reason for tegu bans, but if that was the case, wouldn't we outlaw cats everywhere? Because if you look at the numbers, what decimates what? Cats decimate more birds and anything else than any other species on the planet in the history of everdom, ever. So it's all theater, basically. Now, why you would want a black and white tegu, for example, as a pet, if you can own one legally, is they're a four foot beautiful lizard that if you get them as a baby and socialize them, can be very well adjusted, can be very placid and amazing pets. Now it's not a beginner species, the care is a little bit challenging in terms of just enclosure size and things like that, but it's not super difficult and they're not, I wouldn't say like a master level species. If you wanna know about the hardest species to care for, there's a video right here for you to watch. But tegus are actually really great pets. And if they aren't illegal where you are, I think they make a great pet option if you're looking for something a little bit more unique and a little bit bigger. And if you want something the size of a small dog and you're allergic to dogs, tegus, they're like puppy lizards. Okay, number four, axolotls. Now, you're right, this is not a reptile, but it wouldn't be a WWR list without including one amphibian. And it's only gonna be one. These are fully aquatic salamanders. They come from Mexico. There's two lakes in the world where they are found. They are severely endangered and they're illegal in a lot of places. California, Maine, Virginia, and New Jersey. They're illegal there. You can't own them at all. And I knew this about California. I don't know why, but I didn't realize it was four states. If you live in New Mexico, you need a permit to actually keep them. And there's a lot of places like that where you can't bring them into the state, county, region, whatever. Now where I live, I can keep them. I do, I have uh, four of them. They're actually really cool pets to watch. They're fun to watch and they're not really they're not gonna be an invasive species, likely. If that was the case, they already would be. But there's no invasive populations of axolotls that I know of. They need super cold water. We're talking about, and this has to be fresh water, not brackish or salt water. And I'm talking like low 60s in terms of temperature. So it's really low. It's not like these guys are gonna be invasive in a pond that's in your neighbor's backyard where it's gonna get to 75 degrees in the summer. They'll die. And they're kind of fragile in terms of water parameters. If you don't know know about water chemistry and water parameters, axolotls are not for you. You have to learn for sure before you get one. Oh, and basically everything I talk about is illegal to own in Australia. Australia, they just don't, yeah, no, you can't keep things that don't occur in Australia. So, sorry, Australia. Number three, Burmese pythons. And I could easily talk about all large constrictors because where Burmese pythons are illegal, it's likely reticulated pythons and African rock pythons and things like that are too but berms are always kind of the face of these bans and laws. They're illegal in places like Florida without a permit, and they're not messing around in Florida. If in Florida you're caught with a Burmese python as a pet and you don't have the proper permit, 
you could go to jail or have to pay a fine of half a million dollars. Half a million dollars for keeping one of these cute little scale puppies. It's kind of insane, but at the end of the day, you are finding lots of pockets of the areas in the Everglades and even north of the Everglades where Burmese pythons are causing issues. And there are so many of them that you're never gonna eradicate them. Sorry, you just won't. Because of a hurricane, Hurricane Andrew, I believe in 1992, it wiped out a breeding facility with tons of Burmese pythons. They escaped, went into the Everglades, and that was, 1992 was darn near 30 years ago as the time of me making this video right now. So the chances that you're gonna get rid of 28 years worth of breeding in the Everglades, a beautiful place with not tons of people, no natural predators really, uh, besides alligators, but at the end of the day, it kind of like changes because at a certain point, a Burmese python isn't food for an alligator. An alligator is food for a Burmese python. So I do agree that permits would make sense for Burmese pythons. The thing is though, it was just passed a few weeks ago where now, even if you have a permit, you have to get rid of your Burmese pythons. You can't breed them anymore as of 2024, I believe. And any outdoor facilities have to be moved inside, even if you have a permit within 90 days. So it, it's kind of crazy. We are putting people out of business. People are losing their livelihoods because of laws like this. And the permit system was working fantastic. If you have a permit and you're operating within it, you're not someone who's gonna be releasing these things into the wild or selling them to people who are gonna be releasing them into the wild. You're probably creating high-end animals that no one's just gonna be like, eh, I spent a thousand bucks on it. Let it go on the air. Like, no one's gonna do that. The thing with Burmese pythons is you can't even bring them into the US. As of 2012, you can't bring them into the US and there are laws involving transporting them uh, state to state, so over state lines. So there's a lot of regulation when it comes to Burmese pythons, but if you are looking for a large snake, because that's what you want, these are the best pet snake of a large size, in my opinion. Number two, illegal in the US, absolutely zero legal ones in private collections, Fiji banded iguanas. This is the part where I puff out my Canadian chest and talk about how we can keep these and you can't. But you guys can keep a lot of really cool stuff that we can't, so, I mean, it's kind of a wash. The cool thing about banded iguanas is, yes, you can keep them where I live in Canada and parts of Europe as well. The thing is, they're very expensive. So it's not like you can just go out and buy one for a couple hundred bucks. They are expensive, they're hard to find, and even if you can find one, scrounging up the dough is kind of hard. And the reason that you can't get them in the US is because of a CITES restriction. They're endangered where they come from, from Fiji and surrounding islands. So to bring them into any country really, is they're just deterring it because if there's legal loopholes, then there's still poaching that's gonna be more common. So if you are in the US and you have a banded iguana, Fiji banded iguana, you either work for the San Diego Zoo or someone who it was loaned to by the San Diego Zoo, or you're a criminal. <laughs> that's it, those are the only ways. And the reason that we have them is because of a very well-known reptile person in this industry that everybody knows who brought them into the country in the 1970s. Offspring of Fiji banded iguanas from the 1970s are in private collections in the US, not legally. And then more were tried to be brought in by the same person in 1989. This person did go to jail because of it. So it's something that is definitely being deterred by the US government. If you have a Fiji banded iguana, don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> and then what I'm trying to say here is you shouldn't be having them at all. But if you're watching this video and you have one, you didn't learn it about it from me. These, everybody knows Fiji banded iguanas are some of the coolest reptiles on the planet. And they're just really illegal in a lot of places. Except for Canada, you can have them here. All right, Diamond, ready for number one? Number one most illegal reptile by far in the entire world, Tuatera. And by the way, probably the most ridiculously cool reptile in the entire world as well, because they're not a snake, they're not a lizard. They're kind of like in between. Their skeletal structure is more, like it's actually kind of closer to an amphibian and a fish than it is to a lizard. Although it looks like a lizard, it is not. And unlike lizards, they don't have two penises. They actually have no penises. Now there are zoos in the US that do have them, but the only way as a private citizen you're gonna get your hands on one legally is like this. There's a, there's a hypercar called Tuatera. That's it. 
And if you wanna see one in person, you've got four options in the US and zero in Canada as far as I know. You can either go to the St. Louis Zoo, Toledo, San Diego, or Dallas. And as far as I'm concerned, Dallas, because I looked at pictures of all of them, in San Diego, they're not really out on display, but in Dallas, they are. And not only are they on display, Parenti monitors are right next to them in the next enclosure, which again, could have made this list because they're also illegal. Basically, no one has them in the US. Now, giant disclaimer, and I feel like I shouldn't even need to say this, but I will. Because in the last time I talked about illegal reptiles, everyone said, well, thanks for not talking about tuateras because if you talk about them, it's gonna bring more people are gonna... Okay, listen, no one who wants a tuatera who's gonna pay the 40 to $60,000 it costs to get an illegal one in the US learn about it because of some bald guy talking to a camera. If you are making money from selling and buying illegal reptiles and you have 40 grand to spend on a reptile, you didn't learn about it from me. It just didn't happen. They are being poached. They are going nearly extinct in New Zealand where they're from, mostly because of things like invasive species that were brought there, things like rats and cats. But it is very sad and it is very difficult to breed them. It takes forever to breed them. Something that's very cool about them is scientists think they can live up to 200 years in captivity. So very cool, but not for you in your private collection. Admire from afar and no, I don't think that someone talking about it in a YouTube video is gonna endanger them further. That, come on, let's be realistic. So there you go, top five most illegal reptiles in the world. What do you think? Is there something that I should have added? Do you think that maybe something shouldn't have been on the list? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want, if I get say 3000 likes on this video, I'll make a top five craziest reptile laws, which aren't just species, but laws about keeping species that blow my freaking mind. So I realized as I was editing this video that I never talked about that contest we talked at the beginning. So here it is at 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away 10 shirts. And the way that you enter is just simply leave this emoji on this video and be subscribed and like this video. And also be a follower on Instagram. Once we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll do a draw, I'll draw them live. And if you are the winner, just show me that you're subscribed, hit like on this video, the whole thing, and I'll send you a shirt. Anywhere in the world, whatever size t-shirt you want, whatever design, color, whatever, I'll send it to you. And before that, we're doing a draw on Instagram. Once we hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, I'm gonna give away one shirt. All you have to do is be subscribed. Follow the Instagram and that is it and you're automatically entered. So with that in mind, back to the video, wherever I'm gonna stick this in the middle of the video. So I'll make that if you want. I wanna say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. And patron of the week, Casey Silva. Thank you, for, like incredible supporter, always there for the live streams, always commenting on everything early. I really appreciate it. And for as little as $1 a month, if you want discounts on the merch, if you wanna know about reptiles in my collection that I don't talk about on the channel, and extra videos, early videos, all of that, for as little as $1 a month, link in the description, Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. And I think we plugged absolutely everything. All right, Diamond, hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.